Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite. We are wrapping up a three, the first day of a three day show. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Scott Lowe. He is the CEO of Actual Tech Media. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having us. And also David Davis, Director of Events at Actual Tech Media. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. So you are a former CIO that started Actual Tech Media in 2012. Tell our viewers a little bit about Actual Tech. What, what was the vision and what, what did you set out to create? What kind of content were you setting out to create? You know, what we started and what we have today are actually very, very different things. <laughs> we started out to create sort of a, a, an empire of you know, websites to, do, to provide content to people, but what we do now is we're helping connect enterprise IT vendors with buyers. That's really what we've settled on over the years. We've found our, found our path about six years ago, five years ago, and we've been executing on that ever since. And that's our, that's our mission is to help buyers find the right enterprise IT solutions. So how do you do that? I mean, what, what, what's, what's, the generate, what's the lead generation that, it, that sure. it takes? I mean, we basically, for our clients who are companies, including Cohesity and companies like it, uh, we do uh, event series we call Megacast, Ecocast, virtual summits, webinars, things like that. We have a significant audience that we draw from to drive those events. And we also created our own uh, content series we call Guerrilla Guide. Um, which is a series of books to help educate IT buyers about solutions on the market, about different technologies, and try to help them understand the, the lay of an ever-evolving landscape that seems to be changing faster than ever has before. Yeah, um, and actually, one of the reasons I invited the two of you is you both have deep background in this environment. You know, Scott, before the Gorilla Guys, you wrote big books about Microsoft. <laughs> and David, you've been training people on this ever environment, but the pace is faster. You talked about it's changing all the time. So I'd love for both of you just, you know, here 2019, Microsoft Ignite, you know, first impressions, how you think of Microsoft, uh, you know, in the ecosystem. David, you know, let's, let's start with you. I mean, it's my third Microsoft Ignite, and every time I come here, I'm really blown away by kind of the scope of the show compared to the typical infrastructure shows you know, that I go to. Those shows are more you know, the plumbing of, of the data center. This show is, you know, the keynote is like using AI and ML to cure cancer and provide food for the world, and it's just like you know, really empowering and exciting, and you know, so it, I find it very personally exciting. And Microsoft, you know, Azure just seems to be on a, a breakneck pace to to catch up with with AWS and um, Office 365 and all these you know innovations they keep coming out with have, have been really impressive. So I've been excited about the show. What about you, Scott? Same. I mean, I think that when we talk about other shows, we are really looking at plumbing, and that's a good word. Um, when we look at when we're here, we're looking at real solutions that are helping solve big problems. And it's because Microsoft has such a, a wide uh, e ecosystem from which to, in which it participates. From productivity in the enterprise to driving you know, quantum computing to artificial intelligence to help tractors talk to the internet. I mean, just, it does everything and it does it um, increasingly well. You know, Microsoft hasn't always been thought of as the, as the most innovative company in the world, but I think in the last few years, we've seen a different Microsoft. And I think that has a lot to do with, uh, with Satya um, and, and leadership change, but it also has to do with just a renewed vision for what the future looks like in terms of IT. And what does that future look like? I mean, it, it is interesting because Microsoft is a middle-aged company compared to all these young upstarts that, that really, uh, the much more DNA of innovation. Of course, of course Microsoft has an innovation in its DNA, but how would you describe what is driving the change of Microsoft? This is not your father's Microsoft. Uh, Honestly, the Microsoft we see today and the Microsoft we saw 10 years ago are not the same company. This is, I, I feel like Microsoft is almost a startup again. And I think if you look at Microsoft as a company, it has its hands in so much that each individual silo is almost a startup feel in the way that it's going to brought to market. And let's just look at Azure. I mean, Azure has been playing catch up in a lot of ways to AWS for a lot of years, just like a lot of smaller companies are playing catch up to some of their bigger, you know, you know their bigger cousins in the market. Um, but Azure has proven itself, it's still not quite as capable as its bigger, you know, as, as bigger sibling, uh, AWS, and, uh, but it's more capable than GCP, for example. Um, but as Microsoft continues to iterate that service, it gets ever more capable, it gets ever deeper into the organization, 
And um, I think it's something that, I, I see that across Microsoft and everything that it's doing. It's not just Azure that's like this. It's like this with, you know, we're looking at Windows Virtual Desktops. That's not all that sexy and exciting on the surface. Um, no pun intended on surface, sorry. Um, but, um, you know, it's something that the world needs at this point in how we're trying to handle computing in the enterprise as we move into 2020. Yeah. Uh there's so much, uh, you know, there, there's a few shows I go to every year where you just like drink from the fire hose when you go this to the keynote. Uh, this absolutely is one, uh, we've talked, Amazon absolutely is one where you come through and the breadth and depth of what, what they offer. Um, so, you know, we spent a lot of time saying uh, something like Azure Arc, it, it is early. Um, and still trying to understand exactly where that fits. Um, being of the day, I'm like, wait, it's management, but actually it's highly tied to the application, which really is the strength of Microsoft. If you talk about you know, what Microsoft knows, Microsoft knows your apps. You're running uh, you know, so many of those apps, you know, not just Office, but you know, SQL and some of the various pieces. I um, would love to hear you know, what, you know, give me one or two things that jumped out at you, either that you want to dig into or that you've been saying, oh, I've been waiting for that. Uh, I mean, I was really impressed with the technical keynote where they talked about Azure Stack Edge and they have this mini server uh, that can be ruggedized and even put in a backpack and he had the demo going with the server, a person sitting next to him using this server and he said it has battery power so he pulled the power plug on it and it kept working and then he said and it's rugged and he just dropped it on the ground and it bounced on the ground and he said see the demo you know, just keeps on running. So it was like okay that's, that's cool, that's pretty impressive. Yeah we actually had the HPE, uh, an HPE representative on the program, they're super excited to have their gear in the keynote and those of us with a hardware background do like to uh, you know, wrap our arms around some sheet metal every once in a while <laughs> and, and touch this thing. Software might be eating the world. We call you server huggers, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, am I an edge hugger now? Is that, I guess uh, you probably are. Yeah, yeah it's uh, uh, you know, free shrugs. But, uh, when it comes to, in my opinion, Arc and Edge, I'm sorry, Azure Stack, um, I think it shows some in incredible opportunity for Microsoft moving forward. I mean, Microsoft has a formidable presence in the enterprise, and not just the enterprise, from the SMB to the mid-market to the enterprise, everybody, almost, has something Microsoft. So there's an opportunity for Microsoft to further that, that, uh, that in incursion into the enterprise, and help, that can help them be a driver for Azure, because when you think about a lot of the challenges people have with cloud, it's around adoption and integration. That's, not quite a solved problem, but close enough when you start thinking about the married technologies that Microsoft is bringing out. Yeah, so Scott, I think back your background, you worked in some of the commercial markets, you talk about uh, you know, the education space, areas where Microsoft had a strong history. Are they still as prominent today as they might have been you know, back in the days when you were a CIO? Yes and no, it depends on the organization. If I look at K-12, I think Google's had a lot of inroads there because of Google Apps for Education. Um, whether that's good or bad is really a different opinion, but it's, that's, I think Google's taken a lot of Microsoft's um, you know, market share there. In higher education, we still see a lot of Google colleges and universities, of course, but we see a lot with O365. Um, and a lot of that's because of the pricing, which you can't beat free, um, but it also has to do with the, uh, with the capability that the stack brings to bear. So um, I think that Microsoft is playing differently than they used to, um, not necessarily, maybe probably a little bit more strongly, but in some ways and weaker in others. Yeah, um, another area I'd love to hear you say, think about is, you know, the Microsoft of old, I think of as rather proprietary and you will do all Microsoft. Uh, we yeah. had one of the Microsoft partner executives uh, on the program today and he was talking about embracing VMware, embracing Red Hat, you know, not something that you would have thought uh, of Microsoft uh, in the past. Uh, how do you think of Microsoft just as uh, a, a trusted partner in the ecosystem today? Yeah, you, you bring up that word trust, and in fact we were talking about that at lunch, you know. Um, Microsoft, we feel like, has so much more trust when it comes to our data, when it comes to our applications. I mean, there's another cloud provider that starts with a G that's well known for selling data, selling data that they own, you know. And we, he talked about in the keynote today, you know, we protect your data and the security around your data, and I feel like trust is going to be a big factor in the future when people think about wh which cloud should I trust. You know, Microsoft seems like they have a leg up on some other competitors. I may be um, naive, but I actually trust Microsoft. And I have <laughs> for a long time. I, there's other companies I don't trust. Um, and 
Microsoft I actually do trust because our, for Microsoft, our data is not their resource to mine. They're using it to give me things, but they're not using it to sell things to other people. Does that make sense? I mean, it's, and that is, we're not the product of Microsoft. And it might be a little bit more expensive because of that in some ways, but I think it provides that layer, layer of trust that you're not necessarily going to get from other providers uh, in the near term. So we're nearing the end of 2019. What is on deck for IT pros in 2020? I'll start with you. I want to hear, I want to hear both your impressions, but I'll start with you. Uh, that's a great question. Um, we're actually doing a big event this week, in fact, and that's the topic, is the, the pillars of IT for 2020. I might have done some research. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, in fact, I, I was at a local user group recently and I was asking IT professionals that very question. You know, where are you going to spend your budget in 2020? What are you going to you know, re-architect? Uh, a lot of, there was a lot of uh, answers around security. That was, the, I think, probably the most popular one that I heard. Um, automation, some people were you know, interested in, in that. And uh, you know, improving the efi efficiency of their infrastructure, I think overall, you know, no matter how they do it, <coughs> hyperconvergence or something like that, just overall improving things to make their life easier. For me, I look at the role of the CIO, and as we look into 2020, um, I think we see a lot of you know, legacy challenges that are still not solved, but some new opportunities is probably a good word. Um, you know, some of the legacy challenges are, what's the role of IT? That's the age old question. I think, we, I think we saw the next phase of IT business alignment with digital transformation, and now we're going to look for what's next, right? Because that phrase is now going out of style. Um, but we're still looking for ways that we can do more with technology than we ever have. And as I look at some of the things that happened um, at the show this morning that were announced, I see a lot of opportunity for CIOs and for organizations as a whole to do more than they ever have before without having to bring a whole lot of complexity, a lot more complexity to the organization. Um, but I also think we see some of the things that have to be addressed. Security is a board level issue, and it's a top issue for the CIO. It's a make or break your career type issue at this point. And I think going into 2020, as we look at some of these technologies, it becomes even more important because it's going to all require a new focus on security. Um, we have an opportunity around to, to actually solve the data analytics problem at some point here in the near future. Um, that hasn't always been possible. And now we have the tools to do it. And we have tools that can do it without having to hire a whole bunch of IT experts through some of the things like companies like Microsoft are bringing to market. Yeah, uh, would, would love to get your, your viewpoint on just the future of work. If you talk about, you know, we, we're saying what is the role of IT, and we say in its best light, you know, IT helps drive innovation and actually can be a leader uh, inside the business. But, we know that the roles have been changing inside a company. Uh, you know, Microsoft mm -hmm. talks uh, rather aspirationally about you know, citizen developers and we're going to empower everyone to be their best uh, out there. Uh, but you know, what does that mean to the person that has been uh, you know, a sysadmin or going through certifications or trying to learn the latest on you know, hyperconverged infrastructure and Kubernetes and the latest buzzword that they heard of? I mean, I, I think that's exciting. Um, especially for people who are newer in IT or, or people who have the time to you know, invest in learning development. I mean, they were talking about power apps you know, in the keynote. It, it, I was excited, I wanted to try it for myself. Looks fun and easy. Uh, but you know, in reality, in the real world of, of IT organizations, and things take time. I mean, I talked to a, a CIO at a large bank and he said, hey, I have 10 SAN administrators and we're going to move to hyperconvergence when they die, die or retire. You know? So <laughs> things, things take time. Um, that's my take. Scott? Yeah, and for me, I think it's the uh, enabling new ways to work. I mean, if you look at actual tech media, we're 100% virtual. We don't have, people ask where we're headquartered, we have a PO box in North Charleston, <laughs> South Carolina. And the rest of us work in Microsoft Teams. And my, for me, one of the most exciting things I've looked at in the last year is Teams. I've absolutely adored the tool. Um, and, 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 you can and, and for you know, I've heard a couple of people talking about you know, people thought Teams was dying, Slack yeah. was killing it, but no. Teams is really good. What is it about it that drives your business? So we we used to use Slack. Okay, we we use Skype, and then we use Slack, and Slack was good for what it was. It's an instant messaging tool that makes sure that you can get in touch with people right away and you can share a file. What it lacks is context. Once something is scrolled off the screen, that's it. You don't ever look at it again. And what we get with Teams is an ability to provide context for the work we do. So we were working on one of our Gorilla Guide books this week, collabor collaboratively inside Teams. We had the document open in one window, and we were chatting about it in a, t in a chat in Teams in the other window. But the 
document lived in the same channel that we were having the, the, the conversation. So we enabled a, a, a great degree of, of collaboration that we just couldn't get with Slack. That's not to say Slack's not a great tool. For what it is, it's a great tool. And I still use it for other teams, which sounds weird. Um, but I, I love the ability that we've had to bring additional tools into Teams that we didn't have before. When we bought, when we, bought we deployed Teams, we got rid of Slack, we got rid of Smartsheet, and we're in the process of getting rid of Dropbox. And it wasn't because we wanted to save money, I mean, it's nice, but at the, at the end of the day, it's about improving workflow, especially when you don't live in the same office. Um, you know, you don't get to talk to each other so over the water particularly cooler. for distributed virtual teams, Microsoft it's a beautiful Teams, thing. it's a beautiful thing. And so, and also even with clients, now that Teams has guest capability, we have guest teams that we work on, uh, work with clients on this, in the same way we work internally. So it's become a central hub for just about everything we do. I mean, literally, Teams is open on my laptop and on my phone 24 seven. Um, it's an app that never closes. It's a powerful endorsement. So, it is. Scott, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank David, you thank you so us. much. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will see you tomorrow for more of theCUBE's live coverage from Microsoft Ignite.